Hi, we're here with um, Bunny Brunell. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and uh, first of all, I'd like to do a shout out for Persona um, for allowing us to use their speaker. And uh, we're on Intertalk Radio and Caffeine TV. And I'm Kayleen Peoples with Agenda Magazine. So, Bunny, you're here at NAM. That's right. One more. You know, it's about the, probably the 40th one or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So, um, I mean, it's funny walking anywhere with you in NAM. You can't get like 100 feet before you get bombarded by someone who recognizes you as well, a bass player. Well, you have uh, so many musicians, uh -huh. so that it's not like walking down the street together. It's <laughs> all the musicians are here, so they remember all the musicians and they say hello. And in fact, that's great. Every, every year I meet people that I see once a year, friends, you know, that I know for a long time and they're all walking around, oh, how are you doing and all that. So, <laughs> You're looking great. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so um, tell me, what are you doing lately, these days? Well, uh, last year we came out with, uh, we did an album with uh, Stanley Clark called Baseball. And we played all the track together with drums and some keyboards. Sometimes it was just the bass and the drums. And then we invited people to play some bass solo. We had uh, Victor Wooten, Billy Sheehan, a, great, a bunch of great bass players that came. And uh, uh, um, I'm uh, actually working on uh, bass player two, you know. Baseball. So, baseball two. Yeah, baseball two. And, uh, uh, it, you know, it takes little time because Stanley is always touring mm -hmm. all the time. So uh, I already have like a, a ten tracks, you know, that's going to grab him and have him playing and all that. So uh, to get the other, mm -hmm. the new version of them with some different bass player. I have like Kyle Eastwood who's going to be here, you know, in uh, 1.30. I have uh, um, Federico Malaman, who's a bass player from Italy, who's a very amazing bass player and it's very funny on top of it. And uh, uh, Phil Chen is playing on the one track that is uh, reggae, you mm -hmm. know, that's his thing, you know. And uh, we keep having more people, yeah. and we'll have other people soloing and things. Like it's gonna be fun, you know. So, right. so um, the first one, it was a nice uh, selection of bass players, but also the you could really listen when you're listening to bass. The first baseball, you can hear if you close your eyes, you know who that who's playing that bass based upon their style. I loved. I love that idea. Yeah. Well, you know, it's just. Uh, Everybody has something different to say, you know, and uh, when you pick up somebody like Billy Sheehan playing, you know, you know it's Billy. <laughs> Nobody sounds like Billy, you know. And something, you know, if you got a, he, something with the, uh, Victor Wooten, you know, is going to be slapping, you know, and the way he does it, you know, it's Victor, you know, right. so that, that's important that people can hear and then they can hear the difference and really find out the, the, the quality of uh, each different musicians, you know, there is not like one better musician. Mm -hmm. That's what sometimes I see on the, on the uh, Facebook, they keep posting the same people over it. Come on, there is like billions of uh, fantastic bass players. Stop putting the same person playing the same freaking tune forever. Right. And uh, uh, so in this case, people can listen to the next to each other to see, oh yeah, I like that. I like what that guy is doing. So. It's a good thing to introduce other people that don't know all, all the bass players, to introduce them to different sound, uh -huh. different way of playing and all that. It's very important. I mean, you've also been known for designing basses. This is true, you know. So uh, I actually started, uh, uh, they had an interview but just before, uh, it was before Larry and uh, Louisa, they had an interview with Rick Turner. Okay. I have to explain, Rick Turner is the, the, the person that actually created, you know, with the, the family that does Alambic. But he's the one who okay. helped the Alambic with the electronic, he's kind yeah. of a genius with the bass and all that. And he got hired by, uh, in 1986, by Gibson who wanted to do basses because they are known for guitar. So they of course ask him, you know, because the legend of, uh, you know, and uh, uh, he actually called me to uh, make a design. They actually, uh, as well, they had Brian Bromberg also. Oh, okay. And all that. And they never really made his bass. They, they made mine. And, but after five years, they were not uh, uh, 
they were not doing anything really I mean they didn't make too many of them they probably made about 20 of them and that was it so I just you know got out of the the contract and uh, I end up uh, going with the uh, going with Carvin for 20 years I was with Carvin but uh, Carvin never really did what I wanted so uh, um, and uh, uh, Finally, I went with a great company called ESP, and in fact, we're going to have the vice president coming here. Jeff, could you come? You know, we All have right. the vice president of ESP, just perfect timing. <laughs> you know, you sit down right here, and she's going to give you a microphone. And I'll Hi, Jeff. Good to see you. <laughs> you know, so what happens? Just like uh, I met uh, uh, Jeff, and uh, I did decide to say, "Well, come, we're going to make." the instrument and what I did I gave Jeff my I had like a three different uh, uh, Gibson that I have I still have them and they took the instrument and they made it exactly oh, wow. which was the shape I wanted that shape that I never really got with Carvin. Carvin did a great job really beautiful job the electronic the picker perfect but that was not the shape I wanted the headstock was not mm -hmm. what I wanted they had the pointy thing and all that because they're trying to match their models but with Jeff you know I just gave my design and they just copied it and made it even better they put a, a Aguilar uh, pickups and electronic on it and it's mm -hmm. perfect fretless they did the fretless with a special finish that we have that uh, uh, you can slap on the fretless, it doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> you know, and the fretted and fretless, they have a five string, and they have a fretted four string that is beautiful with a, a black, a clear, uh, what's the name of the finish? Black. Uh, uh, black aqua. A black, black aqua. aqua, you know, that's what it is. Yeah. You know, so. Oh, that's a beautiful one. You know, yeah. so, and uh, here is the man yeah. who made it happen. You know, Jeff Moore, the one and only. Thanks for inviting me last minute. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Jeff, uh, can you tell me, uh, what was the process in him actually making his bass? Was it like complicated or? Well, when we work with any artist, we obviously, uh, we need the input from, you know, the artist's current instrument, previous instruments. In this case, it wasn't necessarily what Bunny had, was playing now, but like he said earlier, it was an old prototype that another manufacturer had made, but never quite got mm -hmm. it right or they didn't go into production, I don't, I don't remember, but, uh, you know, Bunny made it real easy. He said, here, this is the one I wanted that I never got. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I have to give credit to our, our production team. You know, they, they, they looked at it, we spent a lot of time measurements and then brought it to our factory. And I think we nailed it the first time, the, the first yeah. prototype that came there out. There was nothing so, to change, it was so, perfect. You know, and, you know, ESP, you know, is, is known for that kind of, um, that, that kind of uh, attention to detail, and, you know, and what we built. Yeah. So uh, we were just thrilled that we were able to nail it. And um, of course, Bunny, having been associated with another brand for so many years, it was a true honor just to be able to build an instrument for him. Not not necessarily knowing that he was going to go with us, but um, when uh, so it's just it's been a you know for me personally as a as a fan of of, of Bunny and. Of fusion and jazz, and of course, ESP is known for its metal, hard rock genre. Um, to be able to bring in people like Bunny Brunel, Rocco Prestia, has allowed us to kind of expand our horizons yeah. in in, uh, in the in the different types of music. So it was a big deal when when Bunny came on board. Really yeah, nice. and you know, I have to say, Bunny is going to be um, Agenda Magazine is adding a column called Taste of Jazz. Um, most people probably don't know this, but Bunny is also a chef, and we will, he will be doing a, a pairing with a, one of his tunes of his many 15 albums, um, a dish per tune. What makes this so nice is because we are a, a high-end fashion magazine, it's nice to have a high-end styled designed base that looks like it could fit into a high-end fashion magazine, which that's how I feel about Bunny's... Uh, the, the, uh, the the BB hot what is your it's BB uh, the, the edition is what's it called your base it's limited yeah yeah BB uh, uh, Bunny Brunel four yeah. five yeah yeah uh, five and four strings it, it, yeah. it, it, it really is one of our 
prettiest faces. It's a beautiful yeah. line, really beautiful but line. But what's interesting is just I want to mention because they do make you know some uh, guitars for rockers, and they have some amazing yeah. design with uh, some painting on it. These people are. They're well, coming up with some amazing product. I think the aesthetic overall for ESP is, is really high end because, I mean, I've been to NAMM many times and for the last three years I've been to ESP and every time I walk into that area, it's just an oasis of like, oh my God, it's so beautiful and the basses and the guitars are so beautiful in there and the design, everything, it's just like walking into, it's otherworldly, you know. Well, thanks, we, we sure try. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, so Bunny, uh, you have any performances coming up or anything like that? Well, uh, uh, there's something going on on uh, March 8th at the Big Potato. You okay. know, we're gonna play with the usual cab. You know, okay. we'll have a, 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 you know, I cannot get the same guys all the time because they're touring or whatever. But uh, I get some great musicians. You have a Julian Coriel on the guitar. Mm -hmm. You have a Mitch Foreman on the keyboard, and I have a. a, a Somebody from New York, that a, a drummer uh, called uh, Carlos Davis. His uh, nickname is Hulk. <laughs> you know, he's gonna come and play. He's, a, he's a, you know, he's an uh, an impression of uh, Dennis Chambers. That's the oh, style, okay, you know, okay. which was the original yeah. uh, drummer for Cab. And then after, you know, usually we use uh, 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 we're using Virgil Donati. But he's on tour, you know, I mean, uh, everybody's going on tour, mm -hmm. so it's, yeah. uh, you know, same thing with the, the original guitar player is Tony McAlpine, but he's on tour, he's got right. his own band, and so, uh, but uh, it's great uh, to be able to play uh, Cab's music with great music, other musicians that are good, you know. Right. So. And you also have this incredible flute player, too, right? That's right, <laughs> on the flute, we have a uh, Killian Peoples, you know, that added uh, the pleasure to marry uh, last <laughs> July on the 17th, so. Okay, so, <laughs> TMI. I'm a little, getting a little proud of here, maybe I should go. Uh, no. <laughs> so, so um, anyway, so we're gonna do some more with, uh, with ESP. We intend to have some clinics and okay. things like that to show the product and things. And I was just talking to, I actually use uh, Eden amplifiers, and I was just talking to uh, Eden to make some uh, a special clinic to show all the product they have and uh, we may be able to do something with you as well uh, the people to show not only the Bunny Brunel bass but uh, all the basses that you have and all the amplifier and then people have been coming and trying them on stage that's the idea that I have so uh, and uh, uh, as I I was telling them you know I mean Basically, Eden used to be kind of on top, you know. And my friend uh, Dolph Ramp, who has a, owns a SIR, you know, say they used to rent that amplifier quite a lot. And then for some reason it disappeared, so they came back with Marshall. And I really hope the people, they put it back where it was, because it's a very great quality and uh, get something happening. So maybe we'll be able to do that. Have people not only listening to a, a clinic, somebody playing, but then they can go on stage, pick up a bass, you know, and plug in, uh, oh, let's try that big one, you know, I want to be blown away. And uh, it will be great to do that. I think it would be a good idea. What do you think? Sounds great. All <laughs> right, all right, you know. So, so just, I, have, I just have the quick interjection <laughs> to say, I particularly have a preference of basses. Um, it's the aqua blue with the black. Ah. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. Like if I was ah, a female the, bass player, the blue one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would so buy that bass. So all of you female bass players out there, if you're looking for a really stylish bass, Bunny Brunel all right. and, and I, ESP. <laughs> and I want to mention that uh, I've been using for the last 35 years at least uh, La Bella strings. Oh, okay. you know. It's funny because at the beginning, you know, they, uh, they came out the first round one because everything was flat one, you know, for the bass of doom, doom, doom. And then Roto Sound came out with round one strings. So <clears throat> I used to put those, it was like a great. Unfortunately, these strings lasted three hours. They sounded fantastic for three hours. So I remember with Chick Corea, I would do the sound check and then I would call the guy, his name was Duncan. Hey Duncan, can you change my strings, you know? Like that, a guy put a new set of strings for the show, like that, I had the sound. And finally, I uh, um, met, you know, the La Bella. 
and I try their streams and I'm super, you put them on and you're good for at least a month. <laughs> so that's, I've been using the, those strings for the last uh, 35 years at least. You know, all that. So. And that's why I tell people, is save money, get a great sound, get some labellas. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I guess our time is up. Okay. But I really thank you so much for uh, joining us, Jeff. Yeah, I appreciate him. that. A shout out to ESP. My pleasure. Thank and you. And then, um, everyone, be sure to get the baseball album that Bunny Brunell and Stanley Clark produced. Um, incredible people. Even uh, Larry Dunn is on that, playing keys, wrote a song with his wife. That's why he composed one of the yeah, songs yeah. called Lulu. And yeah. uh, he's a fortunate yeah. enough to have him, you know, playing the keyboards yeah. anyway. So, but uh, you have to tell people, we got an album coming out with uh, you, you know, <laughs> called Romantic Bossa Nova. Yes, we have an album called Romantic Bossa Nova. Um, Bunny's actually singing on one tune. Ooh. He sings, he sang In it. In Portuguese. It was so good, I had to re-sing my part. That's how good it was. <laughs> but uh, I want to do a shout out to Inner Talk and Caffeine TV. And I'm Agenda Magazine. Bunny Brunel will be having a column in Agenda Magazine called The Taste of Jazz. Thank All you. All right. <laughs> Very good. Excellent. Thank you so much.